Um, we started to look at factorizing a squared minus b squared, and we got a minus b by a plus b, right? So what that means is that a minus b is a factor of this, a plus b is a factor of this, right? So our homework was to factorize a cube minus b cube. Since what would be a factor of a cube minus b cube? What is guaranteed to be a factor? A minus b. How we could how we could check it and make sure, All right? Here we could do. If f of x is equal to a cube minus b cube, what you could do is you could check and see what's f of b, right? Let's make it a little more specific. Let's call this e, right? Check what's f of b. F of b will be b cube minus b cube, which is zero. So it should work out, right? Remember this rule. If you divide f of x by ax plus b, you should get what? You should get the remainder, right? And if the remainder is zero, then it's a factor. So you could also use this here, right? Let's jump straight into it. A cube minus b cube. A into a cube is what? A squared. A squared by a is a cube. A squared by minus b is minus a squared b. Next step. Subtract, subtract. A cube minus a cube is zero, right? There is no a squared minus b term, right? So therefore, there's a zero on top. So to be minus minus a squared plus b squared, that will give you plus a squared b. And then you bring down your minus b cube. What's the next step, Shibish? A into a squared b. And the answer is what? A by B is A squared B, and uh, AB by minus B is minus AB squared. What's the next step? Minus sign, minus sign. A squared minus B squared, that'll be zero. Then you have a minus here and a minus here, so that'll give you, that will give you plus AB squared, and then you bring down here, minus B cubed. What's the next step? Go again. A into A squared B is what? A, sorry, A into A B squared. The A's will cancel and you'll get B squared. Then multiply it back. B squared by A is A B squared. B squared by minus B is minus B cubed. Minus, minus. Right, so you're good to go. So therefore, if I ask you to factorize A cubed minus B cubed, the answer is, a minus b by this on top there by a squared plus a b plus b squared right so if i ask the factorize a cube minus b cube that's what you get. right so for those who didn't get a chance to do the homework long divide for me a plus b enter a cube plus b cube try this here please A into A cube is A squared, A squared by A is A cube, A squared by A is A squared B. Minus, minus, this will be zero. You'll be left with minus A squared B and then you bring down the B cube. Go again, A into minus A squared B is minus AB. Minus AB by A is minus A squared B. Minus AB by plus B is minus a b squared, right? Subtract, subtract. This will be zero. This will be plus a b squared. Then they bring down the m cube. Long divide again, a into a b squared. That will be b squared. b squared by a, b squared by positive b is subtract and you get zero. So therefore a cube plus b cube is equal to of course, you don't have, you can learn this, you can learn this expansion of it. You don't have to go on long divide all the time, right? A plus B by A squared minus AB plus B squared. But what, what is different about the expansion? The signs, right? The sign in front of the AB. So head up logic and reasoning. In logic and reasoning, no more numbers, yeah. just letters, right? 
those who did physics and remember logic years is very, very similar. So let's start here. In logic and reasoning, we need to understand those two things there. What's a proposition? A proposition is basically a statement that could be true or false, okay? Right, so example, um, the place is sunny, that's a proposition. That can either be true or false, okay? A truth value, again, similar, um, can be true or false. A truth table is a combination of all the truth values, right? So if you look here, watch here. If you have, if you have, if you have one proposition, if you have one proposition, that proposition can either be true or false. That's all, nothing else. Like binary, can either be high or low, true or false. If you have two propositions, then you have four possible combinations. You could have both statements being true, one being true, the next being false, and uh, you could have one being false, one being true, or both, both being false, okay? What would happen if you have three propositions, P, Q, and R? How many possible combinations you could have? Look at the formula. So you'll have two to the power of three, eight combinations, okay? How do you figure it out? Instead of doing it, right? The, the trick is just doing this. Four truths, four false. Two truths, two false. One true, one false, right? If you do that properly, it will line up and give you your eight possible combinations, okay? So if you have one proposition, you have two options. If you have two propositions, you have four options. If you have three propositions, you have eight options. So the first thing that we need to know is something called negation. What does negation mean, right? Those who remember, yeah, those who remember those physics, negation was a not gate, right? So if I tell you that P is true or false, right? Then the negation of P will be false and true, okay? So the, the negation of false is true and the negation of true is false, just the opposite. So this here is a symbol. So suppose I give you a statement. The statement is P, Bob is smart. Then what would be the negation of P? Bob is not smart. We have to learn to use the worded form and the symbol form. But what will happen if you take a negation and you negate it again? It will cancel off. So the double negation is P. So if I told you that P is T, we could set up a truth table for this. Huh? So P could be true or false. Negation of P will be false and true. And the double negation is what? True and false. Right? So basically, this giving it back this. That's okay? Double negation giving it back the original. So it's like when they connect to not gates, they cancel out. Here is the first technique that we're going to learn to prove logically equivalent. So if I ask you, Brittany, show that P and negation, double negation of P are logically equivalent, what you will do is you'll set up a table, okay? And if this column is identical to this column, then they are logically equivalent. That's okay? That's the table method. There's a table method and there's the algebra method. The good thing is the algebra method never came, but we still have to learn it. I'll show you that really later on. Right, compound statements. Compound statement is where you put two simple statements together using some form of connection, okay? The first connection that we're going to learn is a conjunction, okay? Once you see this upside down um, V, that's conjunction. So if the V upside down is conjunction, if it's not, it's disjunction. Conjunction means and, okay? And uh, what's the true table for it? A true and a true gives you a true. Everything else is false. And that's what I want to learn. I want you to learn that this symbol conjunction, uh, false always gives you a false. Remember that, right? Once you have a false, you always get a false. You can make a quick note to that. Right? So that conjunction. Right? Conjunction is whenever you have two choose, you'll get a true. Right? If you have a false, you guarantee to get a false. Let's do a true table for 
negation of P and Q. All right. How many variables you'll see in there? All right. P and Q. And then how do we reach the P like negation P and Q? So in order for us to set up this two table, we need to get not P and then apply the conjunction, right? So we need not P and we need not P and Q. So here's true, here's true. All right, nice. So what is the negation of P? Help me out please, um, Nikolai. FF, PT, nice. And now, what is the negation of P and Q, um, Shivish? False, what's false and false? What's true and true? True and false. Okay, so that's the way you build a truth table. Look at how many variables you have. Set up, set up the inputs and then work out the outputs. Right, as a quick practice, try this please. Tom build this please, negation of P and the negation of Q. All right, let's see. Um, just do all this two table pass them now, Aiden. First column. Next one. F T F T. And what's the last thing? F F F T. Nice. What's this part of this statement here? Brittany, follow what here. Right? Here's what they're saying. They're saying P and false always giving you something false. There are two definitions that we need to learn. There are two definitions we need to learn. If something is all false, then the statement is said to be a contradiction, right? If these statements are all true, it's said to be a tautology. If all the values are true, right? All the true values are true, then this statement here is a tautology. If all the values are false, then this statement here is a contradiction. Next one to learn, disjunction. Make a note of it, please. Disjunction, the symbol is the V. It's like the OR gate. So once you have a true, you're getting a true. Two false given you a false, right? This here is the summary. That's put the summaries. So based on what P is, I'll tell you what the answer is. So see this here? If P is true, then true or true given it true. So it means that whatever P is, that's the answer. False or false given it false. All these are rules you have to learn in algebra. But it's showing you what I kind of show you where it came from. Sometimes it's easier to remember this and all the rules. Try that there. How many variables you have there? P, Q, and R. Do that, please. Right, when you're building it, please remember that you have to incorporate everything, right? So you have your three variables. Then uh, after you do your three variables, uh, right, you have your P and Q. Uh, you have your Q or R, and then you combine them. P and Q or Q or R. So here's true, 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 true. False, 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 true, true. And here's true, false, true, false. Right? P and Q. P and Q is what? True, true, false, 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 false. That's okay? And Q or R, that'll be true, 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 false, true, 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 false. And now we want to four both of them. So that's true, 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 false, true, 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 false. That's okay. So it appears that these two are logically equivalent. They, they didn't ask us, but nice. Let's continue. So we did, um, we did negation. We did conjunction, disjunction. So the next one, the next connectivity that we're going to use is conditional. So once you see the arrow, it means conditional, right? So the rules are true implies true, that's true. 
True implies false, that's false. False implies true, that's true. False implies false, is true. So basically they are all true except when true implies false, okay? So once you see true implies false, then that's a false statement. Everything else is true, right? Um, so if you look here, that arrow means implies, right? So you wanna, if you wanna connect Thomas Smart and he does well in exams, you wanna, con you wanna connect it via words with a symbol. You say Thomas Smart implies he does well in exams. So once you're taking up this symbol here, the arrow, arrow can be represented by the word implies. Here's a quick truth table on uh, P conditional negation of Q. Right, so if you look at P and negation of Q, what you see here, true implies false is what? False, uh, correct. True implies true as, false implies false as, false implies true as. So you have to learn all these things, right? You have to learn all these, all these connectivities and negation as well. Biconditional means what? Biconditional implies that when the statements are, this, when the true values are the same, right? The statement is true. Anybody remember what gate is this? The X no gate, X no, right? Biconditional, two arrows, right? Back to back arrows, right? We have to learn three more definitions, okay? Last three, real easy. If I give you a conditional statement, P implies Q, then the converse of that statement, you just flip it around. So you flip around the Q and the P. If I ask you, what's the inverse of this statement here? You just negate the P and Q. And if I say, well, what's the contrapositive of this statement here? You flip it around and negate them. Copy that down quickly, I wanna give you an example, right? Let's take the negation of P implies Q and find the converse, inverse and contrapositive. Right, converse. What's the converse of the negation of P implies Q? Right, so that'll be Q implies the negation of P. What's the inverse? P implies, not Q. And last one. Negation of Q implies P. So you flip it around and you negate that. All right, let's give 2018 a quick little try. Right, um, let's start with the negation of P. F, F, true, true. F, true, F, true. And then we want P or Q. P or Q, so that will be true, 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 false. And now we're gonna negate all of that. False, 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 true. Right? How are we getting this now? We're looking at P and Q. Okay? So using conjunction. False and false, that's false. False and true is false. True and false is false. True and true is true. These two columns are identical. So you're telling them that the truth values for the columns are the same, therefore they are logically equivalent. 